Welcome to She Rebel Radio, the podcast for high-performing women leaders who want to unlearn conventional rules, leave prestigious careers, and launch businesses of significance. Each week, She Rebel Radio brings you insights and advice from women entrepreneurs who transformed their prestige prisons into daring entrepreneurial success stories. Now, here is your host, Lulu Nins. Welcome to episode 48 of She Rebel Radio, how to self-actualize your home and how it might actually be holding you back. Patricia Lohan is a feng shui expert, international motivational speaker, and also the author of The Happy Home, which is a guide for creating a home which is magnetic to more happiness, health, and wealth. Patricia says it's not just about how hard you work or how much personal development you've done. It's about the environment you're doing it in. In a nutshell, your home can either be a magnet for more of what you want, or it could actually be holding you back. And as that's a space we're all spending a lot of time in right now. This is the perfect episode. Patricia, welcome from Bali. It's amazing to have you here today. How are you doing? Thank you so much. I'm doing great. Oh, I know. I was quite jealous seeing you on video. Um, seeing outside, it is looking very, Ooh. very nice, although it's pretty nice here in the UK today. So, um, so Yeah, I actually am just come out to swing on my hammock. I have like my desk and my office space set up, but then sometimes when I just need to kind of like be in a more relaxed space, I have my hammock outside my office and it's in our garden, which is all green and lush. So it's super nice. Oh, jealous. Sounds lovely. <laughs> Sounds lovely. And on that note, let's kick off and ask the, I'm going to ask, why is our environment so important in creating more happiness, discovery of our purpose and reaching our highest potential. Why is it so important? Well, I suppose I have to go back to the beginning and explain that like feng shui isn't, um, like there's a lot of like myths about it. So feng shui can be people have learned like since it came from the East to the West, that it's about moving furniture. It's about the placement of stuff and hanging weird stuff in your house. Mm -hmm. And um, to me, that's not actually real like that is a tiny tiny part of it it's like the drop in the ocean of what feng shui really is and I like to say that it is actually um it originates from China it's 4,000 years old and it was a really it's used to make homes um healthy and wealthy homes and that's why it's so important because we spend so much time just like you said in the intro that in our homes especially right now and the energy of our homes is in, uh, actually can be impacting our health our finances our career um our relationships like every single part of our home um because our every part of our home represents a part of our life um and this may be new to people to some people but um you know, you may have gone into homes in the past and felt this like, oh, weird feeling or lived in a house where things just didn't go well for you. Um, and we kind of think, and in this world that we're all in a personal development now and personal growth, it's often looked at like, well, if something's not going right in your world, it's your fault. And you have to go and figure out on the inside what it is. You either need to work harder, you need to clear some trauma or money blocks or something. Mm. And most people, when they come across me, they're doing that stuff, yet they're still hitting some type of plateau in their life um, or they're struggling to really call in what they truly want. Um, and it's because of the physical environment that they're living in. And that's why it's so important because, you know, this is something that is a resource that we all have. We're so lucky if we're listening, if you're listening here today, we have a roof over our head, we do have a home. And it's something that can actually help us like, 10x our results or even more without mm -hmm. having to work harder or do anything different. So why not use your yeah. home? Use all the resources we have available. And it's so interesting you say that. I, um, and some of the listeners know, uh, sold my home before lockdown here in the UK and was going to travel for a year and I might still do that. Um, but a house came up uh, for sale down the road, which is right on the water. And uh, I, want, uh, I had to wait to have a look. But the person who lived there had gone bankrupt. Okay. And I was like, oh, I'm not sure, you know, about the vibes that I'm going to feel. And actually, when I went in, I could feel it. Yeah. The whole, it, well, the energy was off for me. Yeah. The really good thing about that, though, is like, first of all, I often, like my, my clients, I ask them like first thing, like, you know, what happened here before? So it gives an indicator, but it actually is totally changeable. So if that person went bankrupt mm -hmm. in that house, um, if... If I like, if I was to work with that house and work with the energy of it, could 
pop, like would 99% be certain to be able to like change that and make sure that doesn't happen. Like that it's not a repeating occurrence. Um, same goes for homes with divorces or breakups or illness or anything like that. Usually it's just a sign that the energy is off and it's actually nothing to do with the person that was in it. Like mm-hmm. there's a combination of that, but most of the time it's something that was going on energetically that we can actually, you know, remedy quite easily. Oh, good to know. Good to know. There was a yeah. whole host of legal problems and I just didn't like it either. But <laughs> it's just still, it's really, they're, really. They're all like huge red flags for me as a feng shui expert. I'm like, yeah, like no, I, I would. And the thing is, most people, if they're going through those kinds of things or any kind of tough stuff in their lives, um, they don't actually realize that it, it's clearly their house that's impacting them. But it actually is changeable. Like I've never actually had told anyone that they like dope to move house. It's like, no, you don't need to move. We just need to make it better. Like, you know, feng shui is mm. acupuncture for your home. It's about getting the energy right. And when we think about like acupuncture, it's like the five elements. So uh, we're working with the five elements and that uh, those five elements are what we find in nature. So if you imagine going outside and spending a beautiful day by the sea or in the woods or just a spending time in nature, you feel really good and it makes your body feel good. It's good for your health it's good for everything um and that's essentially the type of energy that we're bringing that we want to balance in your home and have your home how will have feeling like that so when you're in that space you become more aligned more connected and that's like really ultimately what feng shui is doing it's like bringing the energy into alignment just like the energy of nature and it feels so good amazing so for those that aren't familiar, what are the five elements and how would you work with those? Yeah, so the five elements are fire element, um, water element, uh, wood, so that's plants. Um, and then we also have metal element and we have, um, I, I said fire, water, I have to remember them all, fire, water, m- earth. So like stones, like literally earth itself. Mm-hmm. So they're the five elements and um, they interact you know, um, for example, you know, feng shui isn't really about, isn't about interior design. So I don't really tell people like, you know, this, this is, you know, the right things to put here and set things up and all of that. Um, but we do look at making sure there isn't an excess of certain elements. So for example, I had a client who had like a lot of red in her house. Like she had like lots of red in her house and walls painted like burgundy and it was really full on. And it's a lot of fire element. So Mm -hmm. fire element is all about, um, you know, it's, it's passion. It's like alive, it's vibrant, but also it's destructive and can represent burnout and anger and frustration. So, um, she, we, we worked together for, for, um, we still do work together, but we were just like working on that energy. And she, she was like, okay, I'm going to re- get rid of this red wall. And it had been there since before she moved in. So she repainted the red wall and like noticeably cha- felt a total shift in her outburst. Like she had been kind of like unexpectedly, like kind of getting angry about things. And her family had noticed going like, what? Like, that's not like you. And once it was clear and gone, she just stopped. She was like, they're gone. Doesn't happen anymore. Mm, Amazing. I've got a lot of blue in my house. I'm presuming that's uh, water. (laughs) Yeah, water. So that's like linked to the emotions. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with having these elements and colors in the space. Um, When we work um, with our clients, we give them specific areas for specific ones. That's going to neutralize and be for the best, like to optimize their home. But um, having them in isn't a bad thing. Like blue is the emotions and it's all about like flow and ease. Mm. Great. What about wood, metal, earth? Any Anything you can share with us? Yeah, sure. So wood element is obviously plants and that's just like bringing nature in. So we love plants in in feng shui. They represent growth, but they're amazing. Um, And then metal is just, you know, any kind of, you know, we can bring in metal kind of furniture or silver or metallic um, paint, you know, silver kind of like ornaments, all of that. Um, And then earth is literally just bringing earth in. So it could be crystals or um, some sand or some, you know, shells from the ocean. Mm. Great. Love it. Got lots of uh, shells outside the front of my house because I'm by the beach. So (laughs) nice. Yes. Yes. All good. So for those um, that, you know, this is all new or, you know, elements of it, where, where would, what are your top tips in 
where's a great place to start to self-actualize our homes yeah for sure so um like I said earlier every part of your home represents a different part of like your life um but I always which is like your house is kind of like it has its own energy its own its own being and I really love to start at the front door so if you like stand away from your house and look at it and you see it and you're like oh my god like it looks like a face you know the eyes are literally the windows you know the windows are the eyes of your home so it's just like looking out so if your windows are clean you can see clearly but you can also see what's coming at you also you know making sure this entrance is really welcoming so we talk about like harmonizing energy and and that like and that feels like something that's kind of like intangible but actually energy is money it's job opportunities it's new clients it's like relationships it's all it's everything it's good and bad whatever is coming in that's all that's what's flowing in and we want it to flow in we want to flow in and attract the most positive energy and as much as as we can in so that means like working on that front entrance so making sure it's welcoming and looks good you know does does your door open easily you know can you get in so mm-hmm. we've had a client like you know if there's a struggle to let energy in to get that energy in it can feel like there's a struggle in it 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 ripples back into your life. Like there's a struggle of like allowing things, things are not flowing as smoothly as they possibly could be. And it's like looking at all the little parts around your house where there's friction points. So for me, I would start with like the front door, like get a nice welcome mat, clean your front door, make sure it's easy to open. And when you do get in, you're like, how do you feel? You know, do you feel happy? Does it feel good? Does it feel supportive? Or do you see like all these coats and shoes and just a picture that someone gave you that you hate? You know, like you really Mm -hmm. want to make sure that what you see feels uplifting. And if it doesn't, what can you do to change it? Like you, it's your house. Like for me, I, you know, I talk to clients a lot about artwork in their houses. I'm so passionate about having art that resonates with what your vision is for your life. You know, that you don't have, you know, for example, if you want to call in, you know, new, like money, for example, you know, I had a client and we looked at her office, setting up her office and she had this beautiful, really well feng shui office, but she had this picture on it. I'm just like, what is that picture of? And we're looking at, it's like a winter scene, you know, so winter represents the, you know, death. So there's no growth. There's no abundance. I'm like, you don't want something that like, there's no leaves on the trees. There's no growth during winter in your office. You want something that's like flourishing and alive and vibrant and looks good and feels abundant, like a field of poppies or, a, you know, so looking at what are the visual cues. And after I said, for tell me about this painting, cause I was like, you know, maybe she was really attached to it or, you know, had some significance. She goes, oh, and it was my ex-husband's. And I'm like, okay, well that has to go. You know, Mm. so sometimes we don't even realize what's on our walls is actually, you know, affecting us and impacting our energy. So I'd certainly recommend, you know, just looking around and and thinking like, is this, um, you know, a a shrine to my past or a temple to my future? Mm, Temple to your future. Love that. And we've... uh you know, the, the subject of money and abundance has come up, um, you know, which is critical with self-actualization. What other tips have you got to create that more abundance? And is there a money corner of the home? I think I've heard. Um, yeah. So there are different schools of feng shui. So some people mm-hmm. may have heard like, oh, the money corner is over into the left side. And that's a different school of feng shui than what I practice. Um, mm-hmm. I practice classical flying stars, which means and basically says that um, we work with every house very individually. So just for people to be listening, they're like, oh, I'm a bit confused because she said something different to what I heard or saw in a book. There are yeah. two different schools of thought. And I just want to make sure that you know that. And um, we really look at every house house as if it is a unique person you know has own date of birth we run like numbers and make astrological kind of reading for your home and, and help balance it very personally so it's like a bespoke bespoke process so mm. for us your prosperity area is the southeast area of your home and you might be like how the hell do I find that like but if you have an iPhone you can literally look get the compass stand it doesn't matter where you stand because the southeast is going to be always the same area um and just find like have a general you know, in when we work with clients, like we divide up their maps and tell them exactly where it is. But even just starting with the general southeast area of your home is a great indicator to kind of look and see where that is and how can you make it feel more abundant, you know? And don't panic if it's the toilet. You know, I've had clients <laughs> I was gonna say, is it the toilet? Like freaked out and they're like, Oh my god, it's the toilet. And I'm like, 
well, how can you make that toilet feel like the most luxurious first five-star hotel experience toilet ever? And um, Mm. I had a client who at the time was looking for work. We discovered her prosperity where it was a toilet. I'm like, okay, well, what can we do? She got some lovely new fluffy towels. She brought in some nice new bath mats, bought some beautiful soaps and flowers. And, you know, every time she walked in, she felt really abundant in that area. So that's one part of it, um, of like just looking at that area, you know, and seeing what's mm-hmm. in it that resonates with what, what I want to feel in my life with that part of my life. I love that. I'm trying to work out whether mine's the toilet. It's either the toilet or the kitchen, but the, the, the bathroom's actually very abundant. There's lots of plants in there as well, <laughs> growth um, and things like that. So, um, and you can use your iPhone, you said, to find, you know, if people aren't Yeah, Google. or you can download the app. Uh, you can download Compass app, like super easy on Android as well. Okay, lovely. So what other kind of things, what, what are the other areas um, in, in the Feng Shui that you practice in terms of, yeah, so, are there different core areas? Yeah, so think? actually we work with nine areas and um, the really beautiful thing about Feng Shui is that, um, you know, whether you're on a personal level or on a business level, this mirrors back. So, you know, I have lots of clients who are entrepreneurs and we will look at their, you know, living area from a personal perspective and their office area from a business perspective and find the specific area. So it's beautiful because as you improve the energy of your home, it's also rippling back into your business and your work um, and for everybody else in the house. So the nine areas are the health and well-being area. So that's all about like our personal vibrancy and, you know, just looking after ourselves. Um, and then in, um, you know, we've talked about having a money area. There's also a fame and reputation area. And like, as we activate these areas very specifically with the work that we do, we see our clients really like stepping into their vision or their power so much more. It's like so amazing. So mm-hmm. but fame and reputation, like getting on TV, being seen in the media, like how you shine your light in the world. Like, are you being seen for it? And are you being like acknowledged for it? Um, we then have the um, career and life's journey. So it's like, not just like your own personal, like what you do as your job, but also, you know, um, you know, what, what community organizations you're a part of, how you recognized as a sister, a mom, a daughter, you know, all of those different friends, all of those, uh, those parts, that journey that you're on, um, is another perspective. Um, Mm -hmm. and then we also have the, um, personal development and personal growth area. So what do you want to learn? How do you want to grow? What do you want to expand into? You know, it's just like the kind of like self personal development area. Um, And then we also have like new beginnings and the new beginnings area is like what you want to birth. It's also the fertility area. So we'll work with clients who want to, uh, you know, maybe give birth to have want to have a baby or they want to give birth to a new business or they want to start a new project or a book. Um, We'll look at each area based on like what their intentions are and how we can improve that and the area to, to support their vision. Um, and then we have family and community. So it's like also all of your family, but say, for example, from a business perspective, that would also be like your work relationships and, you know, the communities that you're, that you're part of, you know, like masterminds and all of that, that would be part of that. Um, we have your relationship area. So um, I originally used feng shui to call in my now husband seven years ago. I got my first book about feng shui when I was 15. And then um, Many, many years later, I embraced feng shui to to call in my husband. I set up my bedroom for love. I did everything like that I could possibly do. And very soon I met Ken afterwards and he had also used feng shui. So there's no, uh, there's like a kind of a destiny thing there with calling it in. But at the mm. same time, that's how I actually got into this was because um, people kept asking me, like, how did you meet Ken? And then I'm like, oh, well, if this use work this for Ken, I could use this for everything else. So it's like all these different aspects. We have money area. We've talked about money. Um, mm-hmm. We also have um, the, um, I think we're nearly done with them, fame, health, career, uh, helpful people in travel. So if you want to travel, you know, I've worked with clients who want to grow and expand their business to different countries, to be seen globally, um, that will like, how do we use their home to get their message out on a global scale? Mm, amazing. Yes, there's loads of areas there. And have you seen yeah. anywhere where, you know, because I work with a lot of women in terms of, you know, wanting to be visible, um, but there being a reluctance to be visible as well. Um, have you yeah. seen that within homes, how, how, you know, women in particular are potentially blocking that energy? 
Um, well, actually, th- th- that's I suppose this is where feng shui has many layers, and at the mm. very top end of that layer would be like would be about the tips, for example, like keeping your toilet seat down and putting putting you know putting images of like what you want to call in or where you want to be seen on like that that kind of top level and then the next level would be say for example decluttering so unconsciously um you know for the fame area it may be just full of clutter and totally blocked um but then you know a totally empty house could still be bad feng shui. So even if it's completely decluttered um, and there's nothing left in the house, it still could be bad feng shui and that could be the next layer and that's what we work with our clients. So I would say, first of all, um, if you're just getting started, like check out your south area of your home. Look at it, look around. Are you clear with where you want to be seen? How you want to be seen? What is your business mission? What's that visibility? And then just look around and see what's in that area. You know, maybe there's things that are broken, which is depleting the energy of that area maybe you have things related to your old business your old career that you're still kind of hanging on to because you're afraid that you may not be able to move into this new stage and you're kind of like hanging on to those books or those files for some you know just out of like oh maybe it's like a safety back you know to, mm. to let go of those so I would say um most of the time it's about like it can be it can be a combination of many factors but first of all it's um you know finding the area decluttering see if there's any shifts from there and then if not then it just could be literally the house itself the energy isn't happy and we'd have to pick something specific that goes into that area Mm, yeah so I can see yeah so many layers but so so interesting tell me what happens when we leave the toilet seat up (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah so that's like another money one so essentially when we talk about like getting all that energy in your front door and um, the bathroom is related to obviously there's a lot of water element already in the bathroom which is also connected to prosperity but when the energy comes in there's a lot of like ways for the money to leave basically the bathroom so it's down the toilet down the sink down the shower So essentially the idea is like one of the things that we say is like, you don't want to flush your money down the loo. Um, Mm. So you keep the toilet seat down. And you know, for me, this part of it is it's like a logical hygienic reason for keeping the toilet seat down as well. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's mostly really about just holding that energy into the house. So it's not like escaping out the loo. Yeah. Okay. Love that. Makes sense. And what about where I had um, a good few years ago now that my uh, several leaks in the house what, what okay, would an interpretation yeah. of that be? Yes, yeah, like so a, a boiler, be... toilet leaking, boiler leaking, you know, that escape, yeah. escaping. There's so many different layers with leaks. Mm. This is a great question. So first of all, like on a surface level, leaks is around, um, like if there's certain small, like dripping taps or leaks, that means like your prosperity is leaking or like leaving, you know, it's just like money dripping down the sink. Like, you know, it's just definitely, it'll definitely be impacting your, your bank account if you have any leaks. So I'd highly recommend getting those fixed. Um, mm-hmm. But the other thing I would say is that something that I personally experienced, you know, as I said, water was to do with the emotions. And if you said you have a lot of blue in your bath in your home that mm. would kind of maybe there's like an excess of water and it needed to be released in some shape or form mm. um but personally what happened with me was I was here in Bali and we um we had this really big outburst of leaks in our under our sink and it was our helpful people area so we were finding it difficult for someone to come fix it and I ended up having a session that same day with my um kinesiologist and I had had some bad news about my dad he wasn't well um and I just was like no I'm gonna be fine no and she just turned around and she's like Trisha it's okay for you to cry and Mm. I burst out crying I had like a big wailing session and kind of released all the emotion that I was like trapped in my body and the house got fixed like the next day you know Mm. so it's almost like it was expressing the emotion so for me if things get blocked there's obviously something blocked in the house with the people in the house there's something there's some blockage there's some not like letting go allowing the flow but if there's leaks it's like there's somewhere that needs to be looked at and addressed and like for me what I see with this work is that um your house really brings to the forefront what really needs to be looked at you know so as we bring the balancing remedies in we start to see flow and more ease and then certain little areas that may not like that you may not have done the inner work on that you may not have totally you know looked at deeply 
need to be addressed. And that is like the beauty of it because I have my clients now and they're like, oh my God, I'm just like something, you know, the kids are fighting a bit more than usual and they'll run over to the family area and just check it, you know, or they'll be like, how come I haven't got like this? How come my bank, my business, there's so much money flowing this month or something? Seems, seems a bit weird. They'll literally go to their money area, check what's going on, check their remedies, look around and they're like tapped in. But then the same goes for if something happens in a certain area of their home, then they're like, okay, what do I need to look at in my business? What do I need to look at in my home around this part of my life? Yeah, love that. And yeah, for me, it was definitely a lot of deep, you know, emotional work that I was doing. And actually I've introduced the blue since that and it's all been fixed. So that's a good fix. Oh, very good. (laughs) Bringing the emotion and the flow in, right? Um, For sure. So within that though, what do you say, you know, and I remember, um, you know, when that was happening in terms of you know the leaks and it was literally about three times I was like okay okay I need to listen to this um you know coming across some people that are really skeptical about that of um you know even though I I think I posted something in a manifesting group you know they believe in manifesting but don't believe that the communication's coming back their way right um yeah so so what would you say to people that are skeptical you know about what about all of it or you know that they can manifest but you know their house isn't communicating with them or Yeah, I would say to them, you don't have to believe it for it to work for you, number one. And Mm. second of all... um you know, what for us in my journey, I've had like I like ninety nine percent of our clients are women, and it's been just such an interesting journey for them with husbands who are like skeptical or cynics, and then all of a sudden they get a pay rise or a huge windfall or get some stocks or shares or their wife like manifests the dream house or gets the contractor you know ten x is her business and the husband's like oh my god like what has just happened like we are just like rolling in it right now, like keep doing what you're doing. So it's like, for me, the, the results is what makes it easier for people. And, you know, I also had, I have like had one client who joined and joined our program and, you know, she was really, she's um, a lawyer. She likes, and, and, and just wanted every reason. How, why do I do this? What about this? What about this? And, um, I was like, you have to trust the fact that you have found me. You've been called to this program and just like work with it. And um, mm. we have when you say what she was best. wanting all the logical reasons, you mean? Yeah. And it yeah. was just like, it just kind of like, and she was still like going with it, which was amazing. And it was beautiful mm-hmm. to witness. And honestly, we, I have like her, an interview with her in my community, in my Facebook, in my, in my um, program for people who are kind of like still like they're in the program and they're like, why am I putting like a wood here? Or why am I doing this? And her interview was just really about that fact that like, so much transformation in her life. Like she called in her soulmate. She had some huge windfalls of money. Like she really, her biz, her career just took off and she's like, Oh my God, like just do what Patricia says. And it was so interesting because she's like, I really wanted to understand it. And this is the whole thing. It's like, if you believe in manifesting and you believe in energy, that's amazing. Like do it. But on the other flip side of this, and you don't, you don't believe in it. I'll, all I'll say is that Every Whole Foods in America is feng shui. Disney's are feng shui, um, Hyundai Cars, uh, Bank of America, JP Morgan, all these Ooh. huge businesses and companies use feng shui. Now, they don't fly a flag outside their door saying, we're using feng shui to, for no. like the goodness of their heart. These people <laughs> and these businesses are talking about the, the underlying, they're focused on profits, productivity, you know, all of those things. And in China, Calling in a feng shui expert is the same as calling in an engineer for a structural issue. There's something going on in the business. They will call in their feng shui expert and see what the hell is going on with this building. Um, and that's that's the fact of it. So I'm I'm I I I'm not really here to like convert the skeptics. Um, my results and the results of my clients are the thing that really people are like, wow, like you know. I'm just going to give it a go just for the, just to see. And that's where the magic really happens. Yeah. Real power. And you don't need to believe it for it to work for you. Um, yeah, you don't. And, and it's the funnest part when I see like clients, husbands who are like, oh my God, he was such a skeptic. I just remember one of the posts like, oh my God, my husband was such a skeptic. And this year he's just like, what do we do with the feng shui? Like, <laughs> and they literally, or like the kids, like one of the, one of the, one of the ladies, Gail, her, her son was like, mama, they just moved into a new house. And loads of weird stuff had just happened. Like she just hadn't got around to us doing the feng shui. Like it was on her kind of list of things. And yeah. loads of weird things happened in like the first few days when they moved in. And the son, her seven-year-old son turns around and is like, Mama, we need to do the feng shui. 
<laughs> I love it. Passing it down like, to the next generation. You know? yeah. Because they feel it. You know, the kids feel it. They really do feel it. And they're and then they benefit too. Like I have Talmar who won like it was so it's so interesting when people come and join, like because it was like Talmar who came to me who wanted like visibility in her business. And not only did she get vis- visibility in her business, but she actually got picked for a TV show in the States to rebrand her entire business. And they like tracked her whole business for like six weeks on TV. I was like, is that enough visibility? But her mm. son won a seventy thousand dollar scholarship. Like this, the day we worked on career, you know, so it's like, it, for me, it's really for, um, the nice thing is the ripple effect for everybody. Like, it's like, you know, mama's doing better in her business or, you know, you're doing better, but so it's like everyone who comes in and so are your children and your partner. And it's, yeah, it's a beautiful. Yeah. And I think, you know, for people that are, you know, we're not here to persuade people. Um, I no. think you might, you might have persuaded them anyway, accidentally, but, um, <laughs> Um, you know, when I look at, I'm still in the same house, you know, um, that I was in when I left the legal profession and, but I've checked, you know, so much has changed within the house that I've, you know, really reflected back of like, God, how blocked was my energy? Just where I'd put things <laughs> yeah. when I first moved in, when I was in criminal defense and, you know, a lot of negativity and, um, you know, all of that kind of stuff that, you know, for those skeptics, just, just, you know, just take an objective view at your house because we put yeah. stuff in places and we don't always really take that in um and then you know a big believer in as well when you're doing the work and you start to change you start to you know open that up and and realize um things that you just didn't see before so so yes within, exactly yeah within that um and you've mentioned you know meeting your husband and he was doing feng shui as well which is amazing um how how has you know it really changed things for you why has it become you know your the, the <laughs> thing that you live and breathe um, so before I embraced feng shui, I had just like moved to Dublin and, um, I was cycling around Dublin on a bicycle. I couldn't even afford a bicycle. It was my sister's bicycle. <laughs> I was living in my friend's, um, single bedroom. Um, just like living day to day, essentially teaching yoga, doing my bit. Um, and like doing what I could to just get by. Um, And what happened was, you know, I got this new apartment. I moved into it. Things were just going fine. Like there was nothing major. I lived pretty much like day to day. That was like Mm -hmm. my life. And I I was pretty happy. I was still sharing my thing. But um, I then met Ken and moved in with Ken and we, he was into feng shui as well. So we started doing the feng shui on our house on a deeper level. And I started training. I trained with a, another master and more, more, did more and more training. And then all of a sudden, everything started to change. Like it was just like quantum changes in our life. Like um, I've set intentions to manifest some money. I literally manifested a hundred thousand euros on the exact day that I had talked about it. Um, I was getting clients out of nowhere. I started being on the media. Like, you know, since I embraced feng shui and started even sharing this message with feng shui, like I've built an absolutely incredible business. I've been featured in the New York Times. Like, I, you know, it's like, mm. I, I, it's so hard to explain. And like, the thing is, um, the way that we developed the feng shui is like literally just people kept asking me questions about it. And I started sharing it and sharing it. And um, it's grown from there. Um, and what's been so so beautiful is when I used to do feng shui for people in Ireland in their house. Um, I, you would the consultation session. You would go to their house. You tell them what to do. Da, 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 this, this, and most of the time they didn't really take action. It was so weird and frustrating. And I would like mm. try and like egg them on by phone calls or whatever and be like, have you done this? And then they're like, no. And the way that it's evolved is we've created this incredible community of like hundreds of women now who have embraced feng shui. And we've done it in such a way where we're like drip feeding the information them to what to do. Mm. And the results that came back have like, you know, they're even more amazing than mine, to be honest. Like some of yeah. them have just like completely transformed their lives, their businesses, their, you know, their visibility just stepped into their power. Like it's been phenomenal. And it's like, not just for like one person, it's like for hundreds. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and every time it's like for hundreds of different women all, all around the world, from all different walks of life, all different sites from studio apartments in New York to mansions in Sydney to like, you know, just, it doesn't matter. Like terraced houses in the Midlands, in, in the UK, like you name yeah. it. We've people in the Shetland Islands to Nicaragua and they're all benefiting. 
So yeah. like, that's really the quanta, the big shift for us was like, we changed and everyone was like, what the hell just happened to you guys? Like all of a sudden we could afford to pay for the driveway and the landscaping and our wedding and all these things. And it was like, whoa, from like literally living day to day, you yeah. know? So it's, it's a big, it's huge. And the other part, and I think, as I said, like when you start seeing it happening for other people, then it becomes bigger than me. You know, it's mm-hmm. bigger than me and my transformation. It is so much more about everybody else, you know, and their stories and their wins. And, you know, it, they just egg people on, like, join it. Their sisters, they tell their sisters to do it or their, their friends. And it's, it's been amazing. Amazing, amazing. And on that note, what is next for you and where can we find you? Yeah, so I have loads of fun things happening. I'm actually releasing my own podcast, which is going to be so exciting. Um, So that's kind of what's next. Um, I'm actually working on my next book, um, but my podcast and um, I have a live event next week. So my world um, is shifting a little bit in terms of I still am like 100% with my feng shui, but I also, like my original background was working with clients, helping them release trauma, anxiety, and stress in their mm-hmm. lives in on the internal. Um, and now it's kind of come full circle because I love getting their houses sorted first because then I'm like, okay, well, it's not your house. So let's see mm-hmm. what it is. And we can mm-hmm. figure that out. So that's, um, I have a live event um, and we'll be working on some of that inner stuff. And it's, that's when the real, like, it's an, it's like kind of next level work that I mm-hmm. just absolutely love. So yeah, the podcast, the book, um, and more of kind of inner work with people. Um, but we'll still be, and I still am constantly um, on the journey with Feng Shui. Oh, amazing. Amazing. It's been amazing to have you here today. We'll post any any links and stuff in the show notes. Any uh, last words of wisdom you want to share before we go? Just thank you so much. And I hope that this really has helped you just think about your home in a different way. And I would just invite you today to just, you know, kind of change your eyes as you look around your house and just look at it and go, is this you know, a vision for where I want to go. Is there things here that I could just let go of to make some space for new things that I want in? And um, that will certainly, and it has certainly helped a lot of people with them um, first steps with them um, changing the energy of their homes. Amazing. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to She Rebel Radio. And before you go, I wanted to share a personal invitation to you for our Secrets to Self-Actualization webinar on the 23rd of June at 1 p.m. UK time. As we continue to navigate a degree of worldwide uncertainty, it's really essential for you to figure out the steps in answer to your call for more. And during the webinar, we're going to learn what self-actualization is, why it matters for women in particular right now. We're going to look at how you can understand what's blocking your personal self-actualization process. And we're going to hear top tips from Camilla Pearson, founder of The Float Spa, from her journey into more purpose and impact. As you all know, recently I've been talking a lot about women self-actualizing and feeling that call for more, more freedom, more personal growth, more um, greater self-expression, more conscious awareness, and to work with greater purpose and impact. And I think we can all agree what we're seeing in the world right now is that there is a need for this now more than ever. And just as a message and and side note from me that I support all women in their self-actualization process, all women in their self-actualization process and all women equally. So please join us for the webinar, um, which you can find at www.lulumins.com forward slash self-actualization. Let's have the conversation as always. It will be great to see you there. And I've got some incredible guests coming up on She Rebel Radio over the next few weeks. Consecutive guests. Um on the show sharing their journeys of self-actualization and loads of other top tips for you as well before we move into a series of solo shows um, following some incredible guests that we have coming up on She Rebel Radio. Thank you so much as always for listening and have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks for listening to She Rebel Radio, the podcast for high-performing women leaders who want to unlearn conventional rules, leave prestigious careers, and launch businesses of significance. She Rebel Radio is executive produced and hosted by women's advocate and coach, Lulu Mintz. 
notes. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. You can find Lulu Mins on Facebook and LinkedIn at Lulu Mins and on Instagram at Lulu Mins underscore biz. Until next week, keep rebelling against the rules and designing success your way.